Let's join a live workshop I recently conducted at a Project Management Institute conference in San Diego. You'll enjoy watching how this group uses a logical framework to develop an action plan in less than 10 minutes. I've added some in-studio commentary to the live action to reinforce some of the key ideas. We'll use a planning tool called the logical framework. It may seem complicated at first, but it's actually quite simple and logical. It's based on four questions which help us to define and align the various project objectives, identify measures of success and how we're going to verify, spot the risks and assumptions, and develop a more complete action plan. So the first question we'll ask is what are we trying to accomplish and why? And we're trying to accomplish objectives and we will arrange those objectives into a hierarchy of outcomes, specific deliverables, and if outcomes and purpose, a higher level objective, if purpose, then goal. Because every project has multiple objectives. We will then ask, how will we measure success at each of these levels? How will we know in advance that we've achieved these objectives? We'll come up with measures, quantity, quality, time, cost, customer, as well as verifications, the means of determining the success measures. Then we're going to ask, what other conditions must exist? What assumptions do we have to make for this if-then logic to be valid? The fourth question is, how do we get there? Now, in my experience, most people jump prematurely to the fourth question. That's like trying to paint the house before you've built it. So let's join the live workshop in progress. I'll periodically come back and add some interpretation and some cleaner handwriting so you can follow the logic. Example of the logical framework, and we have an interesting uh, suggestion from one of the participants here it has to do with dogs. So, all dog lovers, how many dog lovers do we have in here? Perfect. Woof, woof, woof. <laughs> uh, so, the goal I think we stated as reduce the number of dogs euthanized. Reduce the number of dogs euthanized. Great. So, what do we have to do in order to reduce the number of dogs euthanized? Increase the number of dogs adopted. Great. Increase number of dogs adopted in, shall we say, San Diego County? Sure. San Diego County. Great. So we begin to structure the hierarchy of, of objectives. What's one of the outcomes, one of the things that we can make happen that would lead to this, to this benefit? Provide that training for dogs that are difficult to place. Okay, and another one? Increase awareness of pets that are available for adoption. Okay, let me start with that. Increase awareness of pets for adoption. And the second one was again? Provide pet training for dogs that are difficult to place. Provide pet training for dogs difficult to play. Okay, what we've done, we've established a hierarchy of objectives. All right, welcome back. The group came up with a hierarchy of objectives of the form if-then. So basically it says if we do certain tasks, uh, which we call inputs, we can provide these outcomes, increased adoption and training. If this will accomplish a purpose, increase the number of dogs adopted, and contribute to the goal of reducing the number that's euthanized. So with that structure, with that hierarchy of objectives, we can come back now and answer question number two. What does success look like at each of those levels? I'd like everybody to help me here coming up with some measures. What does this look like? How would we measure that we've reduced the number of dogs euthanized? Again, looking for quantity, quality, and time. Anybody? So look at past statistics. Say again? Past statistics. Okay, past statistics would be a, a means of verification. So let me structure a measure here that in the year 2012, the number of dogs euthanized is reduced by 20%. Okay, what, by a percent or reduced from X to Y or 20%. Okay? Media verification for that would be? Measure the number of dogs used. Right, so it would be 
measure of 2011, measure of 2012. Right, okay, so uh, medical records. Medical records at the place where they euthanize them. Good, 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 good. All right, increased number of dogs adopted in San Diego County. That's pretty similar as well. That in 2012, the number of adopted dogs increased from X to Y. Verification of that would be adoption, adoption records. Woof. Okay, welcome back. Let's add the success measures the group developed at the goal level, reducing the number of dogs euthanized by a certain number during the year. At the purpose level, increasing the number adopted. At the outcome level, measures there as well, 30% increase in the number of calls would be a good indicator of increased awareness of pets adopted and training and so forth. So these measures, along with verifications, provide the basis by which we'll track implementation success as well as evaluate after the fact how successful our effort has been. Now let's add the third question. What other conditions must exist? This gets into assumptions and risk factors. Back to live action. All right, creative group, I'm impressed. <laughs> so if these outcomes, we can achieve this purpose, provided that, what? What assumptions do we have to make to go, to go from here to here? Training works. Ah, that the training is effective. That the training works. Otherwise, people are going to take the dog home. I can't deal with this dog. Bring it back. That the marketing works? That the marketing works. Okay. That people prefer adopted dogs or, you know, that, that they're willing to adopt a dog? Yes. People are willing to adopt a, let's say, a bad dog. Okay. Now, what could you do to reduce that risk, to influence that assumption? Let them know that you've trained them and that they've improved. And good, 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 good. So that might be part of this awareness program. Huh? Awareness, more exposure to the um, dependent dogs in humane society. There more exposure. People need more opportunities to see them or interact with them. Yes, okay, so you might have... Uh, what do you call it? Open day? What do you, what do you call open day? Open house. house. Open house. Open house. Open dog house day. <laughs> open house for dog days. For dogs day. Okay. Could we give yeah. incentives? Huh? And could we give incentives too? Like free training or free... We dogs? actually have it. And we do provide pet training for, dog, for dogs that are difficult to place. Alright. So if this, then this. If this, then this. What additional assumptions? Now, there's a whole bunch of activities that we have to, to put in place in order to produce these outcomes. Looking at this set of outcomes, what are some of those activities? Uh, cooperation with the penal facility. Good, good. That the penal facility will cooperate. Okay, what else? Yeah. Well, at the very beginning that you're in a geographical area that's dog friendly. There's like Boston loves dogs, other parts of the country don't. Yeah, so well, you would want to make sure that you're in an area that actually... That you're in a dog friendly areas. area. Okay, can you, can we think of a place that isn't dog friendly? Yeah. My apartment. I'm just <laughs> <laughs> Your apartment. Oh, okay. okay, so we're going to be in a dog friendly area. A dog friendly area. Excellent. Okay, any others? Uh, trainers are available. Good. Trainers available. Trainers available at no cost, huh? Yes. So does that su suggest the need for another outcome on a trainer recruitment program? Yes. Good. So we have trainer recruitment. Excellent. About funding for yep. marketing awareness program? Ah, we can get funding for marketing awareness. Funding for marketing. And training. Marketing and training. 
Okay, good. So let's take a look. I think we've got good assumptions there. We'll come back and test a few of those. If we increase the number of dogs adopted in San Diego, we can reduce the number euthanized, assuming that what? No, nope. they are adopted. Yeah, that's a pretty clear measure, isn't it? Yes. Assuming, let's say, that there's no change in, youth, in the euthanization policies. All right, the group identified a set of assumptions. We're in a dog-friendly area, volunteers available. They had identified assumptions that impact each level. Tra the training works. People are willing to adapt a bad dog. The goal level, no major change in policies. So there's a, what I call the implementation equation. We can test our project in advance by saying, if we do these tasks and these assumptions are valid, we'll produce these outcomes. That helps us to identify other missing elements, other pieces we need to add to it in the beginning. We then go on to say if these outcomes and these assumptions, and assumptions are factors we can't always control, then we'll accomplish this purpose. If this purpose and assumptions, then the goal of reduce the number of dogs euthanized. Now, as you've seen, that group had a lot of fun developing that example. They contributed all their ideas, but more importantly, it created a shared understanding of the big picture. And that's so necessary in the kind of projects that you and I engage in to get a shared understanding at the higher levels to identify success in advance, to identify the risks before we drill down into the details. This brief demonstration showed the power of the logical framework to help groups get aligned around a common measurable goal, identify how to get there, and spot the risks in advance. The logical framework's proven ability to help people and organizations get better results make it a natural choice to unlock solutions to your most important issues.